One of the guiding principles of development is that you should always strive for code reuse. So you don't want to write the same code repeatedly. You can put the code in a method and call that method repeatedly. You don't want to define the same methods over and over again. You put those methods in a class and then use the class repeatedly. Another guiding principle is to make your code as generic as possible. You don't want to write 10 methods to handle 10 different data types. So you don't want a method that adds two integers together, and create a different method to add two decimals together, and create a different method to add two dates together. What you'd really like is one method that can handle multiple data types. So you'd want to have a generic add method that can add two of anything. You can create a generic method that will perform the same task for multiple data types. And you can do this because of a new concept called type parameters. A type parameter is a placeholder for a specific data type. And the calling code decides at runtime what type it'll pass to the method. So you define a method at design time as being able to take multiple data types, and then at runtime, you decide what type you'll pass each time you call the method. And a type parameter is a placeholder for a single data type. So at runtime, you can't mix and match data types. You can't pass two different data types to a method. You're limited to one at a time. And you'll use the type parameter to declare that a method or a class is generic. A generic class has similar behavior to a generic method, but it's at the class level, and actually at the class instance level. You declare the class with the type parameter, not the individual methods, and then what you're enforcing is that when you create an instance of the class, every call to a method of the class has to use the same data type. If you want to use a different data type, then you can create a different instance of the class. Well, let's see how generics work in code. Let's see how we create generic classes and methods and how we use them. I have the sample application running. and Let's see an example of some code that shows us a good use of generics. I'm going to run the first example, swap values. And in here, I'm going to create two variables, value 1 and value 2. They're both integers. And then I want to swap their values. So earlier, I wrote a swap method, and I put it in the helper class. And this swap method will be used to, as the name implies, swap values. Let's step into that. So my swap method takes two integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this case, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then very simple code to swap their values. And when we come out, value 1, which used to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is now 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Value 2, which used to be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's great. I can now swap integers. Well, maybe I want to swap strings. So let's create two strings, abra and cadabra. And then let's call the swap method. Only this time, let's call an overloaded version of the swap method that instead of taking integers, takes strings. So we pass in two strings, abra and cadabra, and we swap those. And the result is now that we've swapped strings. Well, if you think about it, if you can swap integers and you can swap strings, you should be able to swap anything. So this time, let's create two objects, and we'll store strings in them. And then we'll call another overloaded version of swap that takes in objects. Well, I need to know what I'm swapping. So in this code, I want to find out what type of object I passed in. If item 1 is an integer, then I'm going to convert everything to integers and swap them. It's not. 
if item one is a string, in this case it is, I'll convert item one and item two to strings, and then swap them, and then we'll return. What we've accomplished is swapping objects that contain strings. So on the one hand, we're very happy. We have a method that'll swap integers. We have a swap method that'll swap strings. We actually have a generic, if you will, version of the swap that swaps objects. On the other hand, we are not at all happy because in order to swap integers, we created a version of swap that took integers as parameters. And then, when we wanted to swap strings, we had to create another version of swap that took strings as parameters. But then we decided we want to be able to swap dates or doubles or characters. So we could either create a separate version of swap for every single data type, or we can create one version of swap that takes objects, but then write code inside here for every single data type to convert the object to the data type. So although this code works and it does what we want, it's really quite inefficient. So let's go explore what we can do about that. Continue running the example and call the second example generic method. So now here, we're once again going to create two integers and then we're going to swap them. But this time we're using the swap method that's in the helper2 class. And let's step into that. And now, swap in the helper2 class is a generic class. And the way we declare that it's generic is to use of item type. So this generic method swap of item type takes two parameters. Item 1 as an item type, item 2 as an item type. And it doesn't matter which item type as long as they're the same. Now just as an aside, in the documentation, you'll usually see generics identified as of T. And a lot of people who write articles use that. You can use anything you want. The documentation uses T. We're using item type here. It doesn't literally have to be T or item type. Then the code to do the swapping is the same as it was before. So in this instance, item 1 is an integer and item 2 is an integer. And we'll swap them. and we get the same results as before. But now, to swap strings, we call the exact same function, swap. Not an overloaded version, but the same function. And this time, the item type we're using is string. We'll swap those values. And now, let's say later on we decide we want to swap days. So I'm going to create two date time variables value 5, which is today, value 6, which is tomorrow, and we'll swap those. We'll step in, again, one method that handles multiple data types. And we can swap. So the beauty of the generic method is that we create the method once, and we up front identify that it can handle multiple data types. And then we write the code to work with those data types once in the method and at runtime we call the method and pass any data type we want. So generics provide great efficiency, they also provide type safety. Let's try and swap an integer and a string. Now this would work using the swap method that takes objects. Because you can pass anything into an object. But in the generic method, this won't work. Value 7 is an integer, value 8 is a string, and we get the following message. In English, this is you can't mix data types. You can pass two parameters of the same data type 
but you cannot pass parameter of one data type and a parameter of another data type. Because remember, the item type type parameter is a placeholder for a single data type. So by using a generic method, we guarantee type safety and eliminate the possibility that we will pass different data types to this method. Now let's look at generic classes. So first, as a review, we can use the swap method in the helper2 class to swap any two instances of a data type. There's an additional method in the helper2 class called makeString, which takes two arguments and then makes a string out of them. Let's go look at that code. makeString is a generic method, again declared of item type, that takes two arguments, converts them to strings, and adds them together. So we'll take the string representation of these two integers, add them together, and the result is the two strings concatenated. This generic method make string works with any data type. So we can pass strings in and get the concatenation of the strings back. So, so far, so good. The swap method is generic and ensures type safety. The make string method is generic and it ensures type safety. So we have type safety at the method level. What we don't have is type safety at the class level. What if we want to ensure in a particular block of code that both the swap and the make string method are working with the same data types? And we can do that by putting them in a generic class. So helper 3 is a generic class. Let's go to the definition of that. And we can see that here we've declared helper 3 as a class of item type. So we've moved the generic declaration up to the class level and then we've included the swap and the make string methods. These take parameters of item type but the methods themselves are not declared of item type. So in other words, make string is a generic method has of item type and then identifies that the parameters will match that type but the generic class version of make string does not have the of item type. That goes at the class level. Well let's see why we do that. We're going to declare a variable integer helper as a new instance of this class and identify that this instance of the helper3 class should only use integers. So when we say dim integer helper as new helper3 of integer, this specific instance of the class supports integers. Okay, we then create a couple of integers and we can now call the swap method and pass in those two integers and swap them. We can also call an instance of the make string method and pass in those two integers. We get the results we expected, but we also have type safety. Watch what happens if I uncomment this code and I try and pass in strings to make string. Well, this instance of the helper3 class has been declared at runtime to support integers, which means that the make string method in that class will only accept integers as parameters. And since I'm trying to pass strings, this code won't compile. If I want to work with strings in the make string class, then all I need to do is create a new instance of the helper3 class and identify that it supports strings. And then I can pass strings to make string. What I wouldn't be able to do on the string helper class is pass integers. 
this code shouldn't compile. So what you've seen in this demo is using generic methods and generic classes. At design time, you use a type parameter to declare that a generic method will support one and only one data type. And then at runtime, you can pass in whatever data type you want as long as you're working with a data type at a time. You can create a generic class and the methods in the generic class become generic. And what you do is you move the type parameter definition to the class level. And then when you create an instance of that class at runtime, you declare that that instance works with a particular data type. You're then constraining the methods in that instance to use that data type. So generics give you the ability to write less code and ensure type safety.